Hello viewers, my name is Mr. Devanjo. I want to strongly welcome you to this video. In this video, you are going to be discussing uh, YGC 2023 for the mathematics uh, theory questions. We are going to be solving together step by step as we are going to be helping ourselves uh, to understand the uh, the past question uh, why gc 2023 for the mathematics theory questions and uh, like i promised in the previous video where we discussed the uh, the objective part of this uh, for the mathematics uh, 2023 then uh, ygc i promised in that video that i'm going to also discuss the the theoretical part of that question with us and uh, that's what i've come to fulfill in this video and uh, it means that uh, if you need uh, the the objective part of this uh, question check the previous video we made uh, before this video and you can also check the playlist uh, of this video you will see that video there so in this video what are we going to be doing we are going to be telling you the topic for each of the question that is where they pick each of the question from and also we are going to be solving each question step by step together as you are going to be uh, seen shortly and uh, also you are going to be solving all the 15 questions all together step by step in this video and uh, but before we get started if you are yet to subscribe to this channel please uh, uh, you are not uh, helping us to improve this video or oh, sorry or to imp improve this uh, channel the way to help us to improve this channel is by subscribing to this channel and uh, if you have done so already may the good lord bless you for doing that and uh, if you are yet to do so please uh, click the subscribe button on the sh on the uh, channel right now so as to help us uh, improve this uh, this channel and also please uh, share this video and uh, comment in the comment section of this video in order to help us improve on our next video so let's uh, dive straight into the first question for why gc for the mathematics uh, theory So the first question we are going to be solving in this video is the one we are seeing on the screen right now. And the question number one is from the uh, quadratic equation. It's from the roots, the sum of the root and the product of quadratic equation in further mathematics and that is the SS2 uh, topic. And we are told that uh, if alpha and beta are the root of this uh, 2s squared minus 6s plus 1 equals to 0, but to find the equation whose root are 1 minus alpha and then 1 minus beta so like I, I told you the where the question came from so and if you understand the, that very well you understand that we can find the sum and the product of this uh, of the root of this quadratic equation so we have 2 s squared minus 6 s minus 1 equal to 0 so we know that our a is a uh, 2 b is a uh, minus 6 and c is minus 1 so we can uh, find the sum of the root of this quadratic equation which is uh, alpha plus beta because we are told that alpha and beta are the roots so if you, if you are looking for the sum of the roots that will be alpha plus beta and that will be equal to minus b over a and that will be equal to minus open bracket b is uh, minus 6 and a is 2 and uh, that should give us a uh, 3 as the sum of the root of this quadratic equation then for the product of the quadratic of the roots also for the product of the root that will be alpha beta and that is equal to c over a and our c is minus one over a is two so for this uh, we know the sum of the roots and the product of the root of the this quadratic equation so we can do that for this equation as well since we know the the roots 
of this equation of the equation you are looking for the first root is uh, 1 minus alpha and uh, the second root is 1 minus beta so if you remember the the template of the equation of the quadratic equation given the roots of the quadratic equation that will be s square minus sum of the roots multiplied by x plus product of the root equals to zero if you remember this very well so what does that mean sum of the roots so you need to sum this and this together you put it here and you also find the product of this and as well and put it here as well so what but so you are going to get is going to be in terms of alpha plus beta and in terms of alpha beta so that's where this one and this one comes in so if you s if you put this plus this into this what do you have we have uh, s squared minus open bracket sum this and this you have a one minus alpha plus one minus beta multiplied by hex plus their product also so they multiply each other equals to zero from there you can simplify further we have s squared minus open bracket one plus one is two then uh, you have minus alpha minus beta so you can factorize the uh, minus out here you can factorize because we have minus alpha minus beta you can factorize minus here so you have minus open bracket alpha plus beta close the bracket then close the second bracket x then if you expand these two brackets one times one is one one times minus alpha beta is minus beta minus alpha times one is minus alpha then minus alpha times minus beta will give us a alpha beta equals to zero then from there we know the value of our okay you can see simplify this one further before you substitute so that will give us uh, this plus one then uh, here you are having uh, minus alpha minus beta minus alpha so you can also factorize minus out here so you have minus into bracket alpha plus beta plus alpha beta equals to zero then now you can now substitute the value of alpha plus beta here that will give us a uh, s square minus open bracket 2 minus alpha plus beta is 3 so you put 3 there then in multiply by hex plus 1 minus alpha plus beta is 3 so you have minus minus 3 here then plus alpha beta is a uh, minus 1 over 2 so you have minus 1 over 2 equals to 0 from there if you simplify further that should give us square then you have a uh, 2 minus 3 that gives us minus 1 minus 1 times uh, minus they give us plus then times s will give us a uh, plus x then you're having 2 minus 3 that give us minus 2 then minus half equals to 0 so you can multiply through by 2 so as to clear the, 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 the denominator you can multiply through by 2 so I have 2 s squared plus 2 x minus 4 minus 1 equals to 0 so take the simplify this one you have a 2 s squared plus 2 x minus 5 equals to 0 so this is the correct equation whose root are this and this i hope you understand that question number two is from trigonometric ratio you are asked to solve this quadratic uh, sorry trigonometric uh, fun, uh, equation here but to solve this trigonometric equation we are having six sine square theta minus cos theta minus four equal to zero where your theta is from zero degrees to 360 degrees so you are using your quadrant here this one is talking about quadrants from 0 degree to 360 degrees then uh, how do we resolve this it's very simple as well of course you can see that uh, we are having sine square theta here and cos theta here so there's a way you can simplify this so that uh, everything look like a cos that is a uh, there's a way we can simplify sine square theta so as to give us cos here if you remember the identity of trigonometric ratio <coughs> that uh, sine square theta plus cos, cos square theta will give us one so from there you can find your sine square theta that will give us sine square theta will give us a uh, yeah will give us one minus uh, cos square theta so if you recall that sine square theta equals one minus cos square theta so you can replace this one with this one here so that means you'll be having six into one minus cos square theta minus uh, cos theta minus four equals zero open the bracket you have a six minus 6 cos square theta minus cos theta minus 5 cos of 0 you can see simplify by collecting like times here you have 6 minus 4 that will give us a 2 so that means you have a minus 6 cos square theta minus cos theta plus 2 equals to 0 so you can multiply through by minus so as to uh, remove this minus here so that will give us a 6 cos square theta plus cos theta minus 2 equals to 0 then you can see that uh, this thing look like a quadratic equation 
so if you can replace cost with some something with uh, a variable then we have a quadratic equation here so you can say let uh, let x represent cos theta if x represent cos theta what do you have here you have a six s squared because you're having cos x, cos theta to be equal to x so here you'll be having six and then s squared plus x then minus two using um, x to replace uh, to replace cos theta there now we can see that we are now having full the uh, quadratic equation here now that we can now solve using factorization method so if you solve that uh, 6 will multiply minus 2 that give us minus 12 then two factors of minus 12 that you can multiply together to give us a uh, minus 12 and when you add them together give us a uh, plus 1 here and that should be 4 and minus 3 i think yes so we have 6 squared plus 4x minus 3s minus 2 equals to 0 factorize this we have a 2 2s into 3s plus 2 then minus 1 is common here you have a minus 1 into 3s plus 2 equals to 0 then from there 2s minus 1 into 3s plus 2 equals to 0 from there you can find the value of our x there so s will be equals to half or s will be equals to minus 2 over 3 which i believe you understand what i've done here then now that we know the value of our x you cannot go back but don't forget we are not to find x you have to find theta so that means you need to go back to where you reuse the uh, x to represent cos theta here so you recall that uh, s is equal to cos theta then then be putting the value of your x here one after the other so when your s is a uh, half here so you'll be having half is equal to cos theta or cos theta equals to half so you have a cos theta equals to half and that gives us 0 0.5 half is limited to 0 0.5 so to find theta here you have the cost inverse of 0 0.5 and that will give us 60 degrees so one of the value of theta is 60 degrees then also we know that the uh, cos is positive in the uh, first quadrant and uh, it's also positive at the at the at the it's also positive at the fourth quadrant so cosine is also positive at the fourth quadrant then how do we get the angle at the fourth quadrant that will be theta uh, 360 minus the angle you get here that should give us a theta to because 360 minus 60 and that will give us a 300 so this is the first value of theta and this second value of theta for when s is equal to half so let's go to the next one when s is uh, equal to minus 2 over 3 if you put that uh, here as well so if you have minus 2 over 3 equals to cos theta so if you have cos theta equals to minus 2 over 3 and that will give us a minus 0 0.667 so also theta will be equal to cos inverse of minus uh, th uh, minus uh, this and that should give us a 131.8 degrees so and we also know that the uh, cos is negative at uh, at the cos is negative at uh, there's a slight mistake here so cos is negative at uh, the second quadrant sorry that's a negative positive as well at the third quadrant as well sorry fourth quadrant so that means i have to remove this from uh, i have to remove this from uh, 360 as well so that will be 360 minus 131.8 which is what we got here and that give us a 228.20 degrees so that means our theta is a uh, 60 is 300 is a uh, 131.8 degrees and it's also 2.228.2 uh, degrees as well so these are the value of theta uh, from 0 degrees to 360 degrees question number three is from the partial fraction you have to solve this uh, fraction partially and uh, if you look at it you should not if you you know condition for partial fraction the degree of the numerator must be less than that of denominator and uh, if you look at it the degree of this one is uh, one and the degree of the other degree of this one is two so this is linear this is quadratic so then you can uh, go ahead and uh, solve this partially and uh, the first thing we do is to factorize the denominator so if you factorize the denominator what do we have we have that uh, this is 12 s squared plus 3 s plus 8 x plus 2 because uh, 2 multiplied uh, sorry 12 will multiply 2 here that give us 24 and 2 number can multiply together to give us 24 and when you add them together give us 11 
so that will be 3 and 8 so that's what give us this if you understand how to simplify quadratic using factorization method so this will give this then you cannot factorize the denominator you have 3s into 4s plus 1 plus 2 into 4s plus 1 then bring this together you have a 3s plus 2 into 4s plus 1 so we have been able to factorize the denominator and we have a 12x minus 5 over 3s plus 2 into 4s plus 1 then from there we have to split the you have to give uh, the numerator for this uh, fraction that is split it into two uh, fractions and that should be equal to a over the first denominator plus b over the second denominator so you can now find the lcm of this uh, right hand side and uh, that should give us uh, uh, the lcm is 3s plus 2 into 4s plus 1 so we can say 3s plus 2 in this that should give us a uh, 4s plus 1 then 4s plus 1 times a will give us a a into 4s plus 1 then plus 4s plus 1 in this that should give us a 3s plus 2 times b give us a b into 3s plus 2 then from there the denominator here will cancel the denominator here so we are having 12s minus 5 equivalent to a into 4s plus 1 plus b into 3s plus 2 so all you have to do is to eliminate h1 for to get the second one so I can eliminate B to get A. So how do I eliminate B? Is by making the value of our X to be equal to when our S is uh, minus 1 over 4. That means you are eliminating X now. So when S is minus 1 over 4, so if I put minus 1 over 4 here, that will give us a minus 1 here plus 1. That will give us 0. So that means this one will be 0. And you can now find our B. So put that here. You'll be having uh, 12 times minus 1 over 4 minus 5 equals to everything here becomes 0 plus b into 3 times uh, minus 1 over 4 plus 2 so if you simplify this further this one will give us a uh, minus 3 here uh, then minus 5 so you have minus 3 minus 5 equals to the 3 times minus 1 over 4 will give us a minus 3 over 4 then plus 2 then you can now simplify these brackets so if you have a minus 8 equals to if you find the LCM here and simplify that give us a uh, 5 over 4 b cross multiply there that will be over 5b equals to minus 32 then b will be cos of minus 32 over 5 so that's the value of the numerator b here so you can find a as well so when x is equals to minus 2 over 3 when s is cos of minus 2 over 3 here yeah, so if you put that here so minus 2 over 3 that will be 3 into minus 2 over 3 3 will cancel 3 you have minus 2 plus 2 that give us 0 here yeah, so you can now find a so that means you'll be having 12 multiplied by minus over 3 close bracket minus uh, 5 equivalent to a into 4 multiplied by our x is minus over 3 so you have minus over 3 plus plus 1 then plus everything here becomes 0 so you can simplify that for that 3 we go in 12 that gives us 4 times minus 2 that gives us minus 8 minus 5 so minus 8 minus 5 equals to uh, 4 uh, 4 times 2 give us minus 4 times minus 2 give us minus 8 over 3 then plus 1 here then from there that will give us a minus 13 equals to find the LCM of this one that should give us a minus 5 over 3 a so minus we take care of minus here so you can cross multiply as well so that should give us a 5 a equals to 39 then divide both by 5 a will be equals to 39 over 5 then we cannot return that here into the so therefore the the fraction becomes this equals to our a is 13 over 5 plus our b is uh, 32 over 5 as well then if you understand fraction very well you know that uh, this 5 will come down and this 5 also will come down so this minus will multiply this plus here so that should become a minus here as well so technically the fraction becomes a 39 over 5 into 3s plus 2 minus 32 over 5 into 4s plus 2 so we have been able to solve this uh, fraction partially to get this question number four is from the integration it's from integration this is integral uh, definite integral you are to using substitution method using u to be equal to 2 squared plus 1 you have to evaluate the integral of uh, s over square root of 2 s plus 1 giving the limit from 2 to 0 so like i say it's from integration 
and this is a definite integral integral with boundaries so you have been told to use a uh, of course they have given you the int to use that uh, you have to use the substitution method here so and uh, this is the question what can you do you need to follow or simplify it to look at uh, like an in uh, in this in, in to look like an indicia expression for a canal uh, substitute so how do we do that you know that this is square root that means uh, this is mean this one means 2 raised to 2 raised square plus 1 raised to power half square root means uh, raised to power half so that should give us this like this x over 2 raised square plus 1 raised to power half then the x and uh, if you understand this very well this one will okay now we can now substitute now so our u is given to be 2 s uh, plus 1 so that means here you'll be having a uh, no okay you'll be having u raised to power half there but before that we can differentiate with u with respect to head that give us the u dx so the u dx will be 4x got to come down here you have 4 times x then we differentiate to 1 that give us 0 so in there you can now make the head subject formula here so that give us the s because of the u over 4x so this ds now we now we now represent this ds by the u over 4x here so if you do that here so that may be having integral of a u uh, integral of a x over u raised to power half integral of s over u raised to power half because our 2 x squared plus 1 is u you have called it u you can see from here the multiply by our dx is now the u our ds is now the u over 4x so you write it there so s we take care of x here then 1 over 4 is a constant they come out so you'll be having a 1 over 4 integral u raised to power raised to power uh, 1 over u raised to power half so 1 over u raised to power half is same thing as a u raised to power minus half you will understand that using indices then du then uh, from there you know how you get this minus because you're having 1 over u raised to power half then 1 over with in under indicia uh, one of the law of indices that will be u raised to power minus half here then from there now you can now integrate uh, this with du so if you integrate this that should give us a uh, uh, u raised to power minus half plus 1 over minus half plus 1 plus c so that should give us a uh, 1 over 4 into u raised to power minus 1 over 2 plus 1 over minus 1 over 2 plus 1 plus c then limit from 2 to 0 then from there what can we do I will don't forget that our u is a uh, 2 square plus 1 so you can if you return that okay 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 sorry we can still simplify this uh, fraction here that should give us a uh, minus half plus one give us a half then also we have half on that as well plus c then from there if you understand indices very well you know that uh, this will be u raised to power half divided by half then uh, that divider can change to times that will be inverse one over two that give us two over one so that means you'll be having two u raised to power half plus c then from there you return the value of your u so you'll be having 1 over 4 into 2 multiplied by 2 s square plus 1 where you that's your u raised to power half plus c then the limit is 2 to 0 so you cannot return the value uh, cannot put the limit now so that should give us a 1 over 4 open the brief bracket here then uh, here you have to put 2 so you'll be having 2 open brackets then this put your 2 here so you'll be having 2 again this is 2 into bracket your s is 2 so 2 squared plus 1 raised to power half then plus c minus open bracket 2 which is the 2 open bracket 2 then into bracket 0 is your x now so squared plus 1 raised to power half plus c then from there you can simplify this further so 2 raised to power uh, 2 plus 2 is, two, is two, uh, 4 then 4 times 2 is uh, 8 plus 1 that give us a 9 raised to power half so you have uh, this 2 times uh, 9 raised to power half plus c minus open bracket uh, this one give us 2 raised to power 2 is 0 times 2 0 plus 1 so you have 1 raised to power half plus c multiplying 2 so from there square root of 
9 is 3, so you have a 2 times 3 here that gives us 6 plus c. So you have 1 over 4 into 6 plus c minus uh, square root of 1 is 1 times 2, that gives us 2 plus c here. So from there, you can open the bracket here. This minus will open the bracket here, so you have a 1 over 2 into 6, then minus 2, because man, uh, c minus c will give us 0. So that gives us 6 minus 2, give us 4. 1 over 4 times 4 gives us 1. So the solution to that question is a uh, 1. Question number 5 is from the probability. A boss asks his, val uh, uh, his blue and x yellow identical balls. Two boss are drawn at random from the box without replacement. If the probability of drawing uh, two blue balls is at 5 over 26, you have to find the value of x. So like I said, it's from probability. You are giving six blue balls and the yellow ball we said they said they are x in number so you cannot know the total ball total ball will now be six plus x so that will be the total ball in the in the box then from there two balls are drawn at random without replacements and what's probability that the balls the ball if the probability that the two balls drawn are blue so so if you draw two balls uh, two blue balls so we'll be having probability of BB and that will be probability of the first ball multiplied by the probability of the second ball and don't forget the condition is without replacement so if I draw the first ball now okay, I'll be giving the value of the, pro, uh, the drawing two blue that will give us 5 over 26 so we have 5 over 26 equals to if I draw the first blue, um, blue ball that will be 6 over the total which is 6 plus X then multiply by if I draw the second ball don't forget that it is without replacement that means the blue ball reduced by one that should give us five over the total also reduced by one that would be six plus x minus one so you remember so from there you can simplify that further so that will give us a five over twenty six equals to six over six plus x then six minus five six minus one will give us a five plus x so we can now open the bracket multiply them that should give us a five over twenty six equals to 6 times 5 is uh, 30 then you can now multiply all the uh, the denominator so you'll be having 30 over 6 times 6 is 30 uh, okay we have now open uh, just put it in bracket here so that you can now open the bracket then if you do that you'll be having x, 6 times 5 is 30 then 6 times s is 6x then 5 times uh, sorry x times 5 is 5x then a times s is s squared so I believe you understand what I have done there. So you collect light times 6x plus 5 will give us 11x. So you have a 5 over 26 equals to 30 over x square. Uh, okay. We rearrange the uh, we arrange here. So that gives us x square plus 11x plus 30. So then from then I can now cross multiply. If I cross multiply, 5 will multiply everything here. And 30 will multiply 26. So and the uh, 5 times x squared give 5 x squared 5 times 11 will give us 55 x then 5 times 30 will give us 150 equals so 30 times 26 will give us 780 then take this to this side you have a 5 x squared plus 55 x plus 150 minus uh, 780 equals to 0 simplify for that that should give us a 150 minus 780 will give us a 630 minus 630 so 5 is common I can divide through by 5 so we'll be having x squared plus 11x minus 126 equals to 0. So you can now solve this quadratic equation to get the value of our hex. So two numbers you can multiply together to give us minus 26. And when you add them together to give us uh, plus 11. So those are the, that's the 18 minus 7. 18 and minus 7. So if you, sub, if you bring them in, when you want to solve your quadratic equation using factorization method, we have x squared plus 18x minus 7x minus 126 equals to 0. Factorize this, s is common, we have s into s plus 18, minus 7 is common here, minus 7 into s plus 18 equals to 0. So we have x minus 7, then s plus 18 equals to 0. Then that means your s is equal to 7 here, or your s is equal to be minus 18. And uh, since the value of x cannot be minus, because you cannot have the total to be a negative value so that means s is going to be 7 therefore s is going to be 7 so number of uh, yellow balls is going to be 7 so that's the solution for question number 5 question number 6 is from the 
correlation and regression in this case correlation and that is a part of a uh, statistics in the uh, finding relationship between two quantities uh, and in this case we are using uh, Spearman rank correlation coefficient so you are told that uh, judges 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 uh, go for an uh, a day rank 10 contestants 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 in the competition as uh, follows so we have contestant uh, A to J and the rank by judge Kofo is this and rank by uh, judge Ade is this so you have to find the correlation between their ranks so you, so you have to find the correlation between their uh, their ranks uh, using the Spearman rank and uh, it's quite simple I think there has been it, uh, they, have every, uh, they have already helped to simplify the question in the sense that they have already ranked uh, the contestant here and they are already ranked this contestant here as well so it's very simple and uh, direct so if you create the table like this you have uh, something like this so you have the contestant from A to J so run by co4 is this and rank by D is this as well so they since they have already they have already ranked the the contestants so don't need of ranking it again so you don't need to re-rank it again so but adding me they have not ranked the values now you can rank but now they have already ranked it that's what made the work easier so this is the rank for Kofo and this is the rank for Ade so all you need to do is to find your D which is the difference between the ranks so 4 minus 3 gives us 1 2 minus 4 minus 2 5 minus 2 is 3 6 minus 8 is minus 2 1 minus 1 is 0 8 minus 9 is minus 1 3 minus 5 minus 2 7 minus 6 is 1 10 minus 10 is 0 then 9 minus uh, 7 is 2 then now square the rank sorry the difference between the rank and you square the day so you have this square equals to 1 you have 4 9 you have 4 0 1 4 1 0 4 then you now sum this you now sum this d squared that give us 28 and if you remember the formula for finding the correlation coefficient you have uh, the correlation coefficient equals to 1 minus c is uh, multiplied by the, the summation of d square over n multiplied by n square minus 1 where your n is total number of a uh, constant and here you are told that there are 10 in numbers so we have a uh, 1 minus uh, 6 multiplied by summation of d square is 28 over n is 10 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 2 minus 1 so 10 raised to the power 2 minus is 10 raised to the power 2 is 100 minus 1 that gives us 9 uh, 99 that gives us 99 then times 10 gives us 990 6 times 28 gives us 168 divide this this is not equal to this is minus sorry for a typographical error there so it's 1 minus this so that should give us a 1 minus 0 0.169697 subtract that gives us a 0 0.8303 to 4 decimal places so this is the correlation coefficient gotten that means there's a strong positive correlation between the two uh between the between the contestants as ranked by the two judges question number seven is from the vector it's from vector you are told that uh, if p is equal to vector p is equal to 3i plus 7j and the vector q is a uh, 4i minus j but to find the magnitude and the duration of the resultant of p and q so like i said it's from vector you have to f if uh, re result of uh, vector p and q is the addition of the two vectors so that may be having a 3i plus 7j plus 4i minus j so collect light time so be having 3i plus 4i will give us a 7i then plus 7j minus j will give us a 6j so this is the resultant of the two vectors now we have to find the magnitude of that how do you find the magnitude of that will be modulus of this so that will be magnitude is uh, the modulus of what we get here because we are finding the magnitude of the resultant so that should give us uh, the modulus of 7y plus 6j and uh, if we want to do that that will be square root of uh, 7y square plus uh, 6j square and 7y square is uh, 49 plus 6j square is 36 because i square times i will give us one j times j will also give us one so that's why we don't have i and j here already again and that should give us the square root of 85 and that give us a 
0.195 as the magnitude of the vect of the resultant of as the magnitude of the resultant of the two vectors. So now we have to find the direction of the of the two vectors. So to do that direction is a cos theta equals so the dot product of the two vector divided by the the magnitude of each of the vector multiplied together. So that means you have cos theta equals so vector p is this dot vector q over the magnitude of the first vector multiplied by the magnitude of the second vector. So from there you have cos theta equals so you multiply how 3 high times 4 high that give us a uh, 12 then uh, 7j multiplied by minus j that give us a uh, minus 7 and then over if you find the magnitude of that will be square root of uh, 3i square plus 7j square that will give us 9 plus 49 and square root then this is 4i square is a uh, 16 then minus j square is a uh, plus 1 so here yeah, you're having 12 minus 7 over this then from there cos theta equals so 5 over sort of 58 uh, multiplied by sort of uh, 17 then that should give us if you simplify that with your calculator we have a cos theta equals 0.1593232 so theta will be cos inverse of this and theta will be 80.8 .8 degrees so one decimal place as the direction of the of the two vectors Question number 9 is from the sequence and series. In this case, GP, geometrical uh, exponential sequence, which is geometrical progression. We are told that the sum of the two, f the sum of the two first terms of an exponential sequence GP is a uh, seven and a half, and the product of, product of the first and the fourth terms is six times the third term, and we are to find the first term, the common ratio, the sum of the first six all terms of the sequence so now we can see that uh, this is a word problem in a sequence and series the sum of the first two terms of an as, as exponential sequence so what is the first term of a exponential sequence that will be here and uh, what's the second term of the exponential sequence that is a uh, hey r so the first term is a and the second term is AR so you have to sum these two first term so that means I'll have A plus AR and that will give us a 7 and a half so here you have A plus AR goes give us 7 and a half this is the first term this is the second term of a GP so they said the sum of them so you have to sum them together to give us this so you can simplify this one that will give us A plus AR equals so that will give us 15 over 2 we change this one to improper fraction that can call that one equation 1 then if you move further, the product of the first and the fourth term. What is the meaning of what is the first term of a GP? That will be here. And what is the fourth term? That will be a raised to the power three. And we are told that the product that we need to multiply a by a raised to the power. And if you need to multiply a, which is the first term, multiplied by the fourth term, which is a r raised to the power three, equals to six times. The third term was the third term of a GP that will be AR square, so we are equal to six times AR square. If you look at that, we have a, a which is the first term multiplied by which is product fourth term which is AR cube equals to six times third term which is AR squared. So that is how to interpret this mat uh, mathematically. From there, you'll be having a, a square R cube. A multiplied by a r square r cube equals to six a r square but you can see that at both sides a r square is common so you can uh, divide both sides by a r square so divide this one by a r square what do you have you have a uh, a r left equals to divide this one by a r square so you have six left so from here you have a uh, a r equals to six which you can call equation two but you can look at equation one we have a r here also so you can substitute this one into equation one so put two into equation one so that means we have in a plus six equals to 15 over two so we have a plus six equals to 15 over two from there you can multiply through by two that should give us a 2a plus 12 equals to 15 then collect like time 2a equals to 15 minus 12 that give us three then divide both sides by 2, that will give us a to be 3 over 2. So the first term 
of the sequence is 3 over 2. Now that we know the first time, we can uh, substitute that into equation 1, equation 2, or equation 1 to find our uh, common ratio, which is our R. Then the put R equals to 3 over 2 into equation 2. So we have A R equals to 6, that is equation 2. So that gives us a 3 over 2 R equals to 6 cross multiply from there. 3 R equals to 12. Divide both sides by 3, R equals to 4. That means the common ratio is uh, 4. So you have to sum the first 6 terms now. Now we know, don't know that when it comes to geometrical progression, when it's, we are summing terms together, we have 3 formula for summing them together. There's some sum of term when common ratio is less than 1, and when common ratio is greater than 1, and the sum to infinity. But in this case, our common ratio is uh, greater than 1, which is 4. So then we are going to use the uh, sum of term equals to a into r super a minus one over r super uh, r minus one because our common ratio is greater than one, which is because it is four. So now if you substitute our values, we have sum of six equals to our first term is three over two into the common ratio is four r super n is six minus one over four minus one. Simplify that further, we have 3 over 2 times 4 raised to the power 6. That should give us a 4096. Then minus 1, that gives us a 4095 over 4 minus 3 is 2. Then if you simplify this further with your calculator, you have a 2047.5 as the sum of the system. So that's solution for question number 9. Question number 10 is from the function and the uh, and the also factorial fraction as well so we have the functions uh, we the question is comprised of function pro uh, comprises of uh, uh, polynomials and the partial fraction so combination of it uh, like a uh, three topics now is being tested here we have heard that uh, the two functions g of x and h of x are defined by s squared plus s plus 1. So g of x is a, is a quadratic function and uh, h of x is a cubic function s cubed minus 6 s squared plus 11 x minus 6 respectively. We have to factorize h of x completely then express g uh, of x over h of x in a partial fraction. So it's very simple as well. Now let's go to the first question, which is to factorize the uh, h of x. So h of x is s cubed minus 6 s squared plus 11x minus 6. So we have to factorize this. So we know that if you have to factorize a cubic expression, you have to get three brackets in this case now. So how do we get the first factor now of this uh, cubic uh, polynomial? How do we how do we fa how do we get the first factor? We have to use the try and, uh, try and error method to get the first factor. So you need to substitute the value of your x into this function. Any uh, try the any value of x that can make this uh, function is equal to zero. So if you try one, put one here, put one here, put one simplify, you give you zero. That means uh, uh, s equals to one is a for, is a factor. But when it, uh, if you down did not give us one, that means not. But when if you you try minus one again, if you give us, that means a factor. If it does not, try minus two, try plus two. But I think one is a factor. So if I try h of one, so you have one cube minus six into one squared plus eleven, uh, eleven times one minus six. So this one give us one minus six plus eleven minus six. So 11 plus 11 gives us 12, minus 6 minus 6, that gives us 0. So it means that uh, x minus 1, because we have substituted x is equal to 1 here now, into this, that gives us 0. So that means x minus 1 is a factor of this uh, polynomial. So therefore, x minus 1 is a factor of uh, h of x. So from then now, you cannot use this uh, x minus 1 to divide this uh, this polynomial and the uh, well, quotient will not be in a quadratic uh, form which you cannot factorize to get it to the minute bracket so we have gotten one factor which is x minus one so you, this one will divide this now using the long division method 
to now get the quotient in a quadratic form then uh, we can now factorize the quadratic form so if you do that if you use this to divide this what do we get so let's see that in action we have our dividend which is uh, s cubed minus 6 s squared plus 11 minus 6 and our divisor is s minus 1 so if you start x in s cube that should give us s squared so then s squared will now multiply everything here so s squared times s will give us a uh, s cube then s squared times minus 1 will give us a minus s squared then introduce your bracket here and uh, introduce minus so that means uh, this one become minus this one become plus so you're having s squared minus s squared that give us zero then minus 6 s squared plus s squared that give us a minus 5 s squared so bring down 11 x here so you have plus 11 x there you go again go again x in minus 5 s squared that will give us a minus 5 x then minus 5 s will multiply everything here so minus 5 x times a that give us a minus 5 s squared then minus 5 x times minus 1 that give us a plus 5 x introduce minus as well so this one become plus this one becomes minus so minus 5 s square minus 5 uh, plus 5 s square that give us 0 then 11 s square 11 x minus 5 that give us a 6 x are we there good then uh, uh, what do we do so x in 6 s again that give us a plus 6 then 6 plus 6 here we multiply this so 6 times a give us a 6 x then 6 times minus 1 will give us a minus 6 introduce minus again this one become minus this one become plus 6 x minus 6 x uh, 6 x minus 6 x give us 0 minus 6 plus 6 give us 0 so that means uh, we are now have a quotient here a quotient here which is also in a quadratic a quadratic expression so we can now factorize this quadratic expression to get the remaining two factors so how do we do that you have s squared minus 5 s plus 6 then from there look for two number you can multiply together to give us a plus 6 and we'll add them together give minus 5 and that should be minus 3 minus 2 so that give us a s squared minus 3 s minus 2 s plus 6 factorize this x into minus 3 so x into x minus 3 the minus 2 is common as you minus 2 into s minus 3 so you have x minus 2 x minus 3 as the remaining two factors so these are the main two factors with this one making three so therefore h of x which we are to factorize completely will give us a s minus one which is the first one then x minus two then s minus three then we have to now solve this uh, g of s g of x over s uh, h of x partially and that one we'll see in the next uh, slide we have a uh, b is but to simplify this one partially our g of x is uh, the quadratic uh, expression x squared plus x plus 1 then the g h of x is the cubic denominator uh, cubic expression uh, which is s cubed minus 6 s squared plus 11 minus 6 so of course the degree of the denominator is greater than that of the numerator so that's the first thing you need to check when you are solving partially and they will not uh, make uh, this denominator we are now factorize it to make it factorizable but we have already done that in the previous slide and if you remember that should this one give us uh, x minus 1 s minus 2 then m minus 3 then from there now I can now solve this now so by this is equals to a over the first one plus b over the second one bracket plus c over the third bracket we can now find the LCM of the denominator here now. So you find the LCM of the right hand side, which will be x minus 1, s minus 2, s minus 3. So x minus 1 in this, you are left with x minus 2, s minus 3. Multiply by a, you'll be having a into s minus 2, s minus 3. Plus s minus 2 in this, you are left with s minus 1, s minus 3. That will multiply by b. So you have this plus c so s minus 3 in this that should give us a uh, x minus 1 s minus 2 multiplied by c that give us this as well so the denominator here will cancel the denominator here so we are left with this quadratic expression equals to this so we are left with uh, this equals to this so we can now start eliminating to get uh, uh, our b a b c so 
how do we start when our s is 1 if s is 1 so if you put 1 here this one becomes 0 here if you put 1 here also this one becomes 0 so you can find our a from there so if our s is 1 so you're having 1 square plus 1 plus 1 that should give us a 3 so you'll be having 3 equals to then a into 1 minus 2 into 1 minus 3 as well then the rest have become 0 so that should give us 3 into 3 equals to a minus 1 minus 2 minus 1 times minus 2 give us a 2 so our a will be 3 over 2 in that case so now to find our b we need to eliminate a and c and what do they have in common they have a minus 2 in common so minus 2 so we can say our x is if our x is 2 then this will become 0 this also will become 0 so you can find our b from there so when our s is 2 so that means you have 2 square plus 2 plus 1 that should give us uh, uh, 4 plus 2 plus 1 equals to this is 0 and this also equal to 0 so you have b into 2 minus 1 into 2 minus 3 so that should give us 7 equals to uh, 2 minus 1 is 1 2 minus 3 is the minus 1 and that should give us a uh, 7 to be equal to minus b then b will be equal to minus 7 now to find the value of our c now what did they what did, uh, what did the a and b have in common they have a uh, minus 3 in common so if our s is 3 so this becomes 0 this also becomes 0 so when our s is 3 then you have a uh, 3 square here plus 3 plus 1 so that gives us a 9 plus 3 plus 1 equals so this is 0 this is also 0 so you have c into 3 minus 1 into s minus 2 so that should give us uh, 13 equals to 3 minus 1 is uh, 2 3 minus 2 is 1 so that give us a uh, 13 go to c multiply by 2 times 1 so that should give us a uh, 13 over 2 as the value of our c now that we know the value of our a b c a b and c now you can now return it back here so you have uh, this is equals to our a is uh, 3 over 2 over s minus 1 plus our b is a uh, minus 7 you have minus 7 over s minus 2 plus c is 13 over 2 over s minus 3 so if you understand in fraction that means 2 will come down here then this one become minus minus times plus plus minus then 2 also will come down so that should become a 3 over 2 into s minus 1 minus 7 into s minus 2 then 13 into so over 13 over 2 into s minus 3 so this is the partial fraction of this fraction Question number 11a is from the application of uh, the differentiation to rate of change. So application of a differentiation to rate of change. In this case, we have that a spherical balloon is inflated with a certain gas at a constant rate of uh, 150 centimeter cube per second. What is the rate of increase of the surface area of the balloon when the radius is uh, 80 centimeter? So, like I said, the application of differentiation to rate of change. So, things need to be put in place before you can do this. You are told that uh, the balloon, a, a spherical balloon, is inflated with a certain gas at a constant rate of. So, inflated. That is talking about volume. That means uh, they are pumping uh, certain air into the balloon. That is talking about volume, and pass uh, related to time now. That will be. Uh, uh, that will be uh, the VDT now the volume which is a uh, centimeter cube then over time that will be the V where V is the uh, volume the VDT that will give us a uh, 150 centimeter cube over, over hex so what is the rate of increase of uh, surface area so but first firstly we need to know the volume of, what's the volume of a volume of a cylinder because we are to, sorry that's a cylinder a sphere rather volume of a sphere so the volume of a sphere is a uh, 4 over 3 per hour cube so if i differentiate a uh, volume with respect to radius so i'll have dv the hour that means 3 will come to the front then we we'll move one from the power because pi is a constant so if 3 comes to the front 3 will cancel 3 under so you have 4 per hour square so that means dv the hour the uh, the 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 uh, what's called the the 
when you differentiate the volume with the respect to hull to radius you have divide the hull with same thing as the the surface area of the of the balloon but let me do it for, for now from there if you know that dv dr is equal to 4 pi r square we can inverse this to get our dr dv that will be one if you inverse the, this one go or this one come down also the, the inverse this as well so there's a reason why we need this there is a reason why we did this so you understand why we did this very soon now having done this now so also we are giving the the rate of change the rate of change of the volume with the time the rate of change of the volume which is 150 centimeter cube per second which is dv which is the volume the relation of the volume with uh, time which is the uh, what is given to us that will be 150 centimeter cube per second uh, 150 centimeter cube per seconds then also we have to find the uh, what is the rate of increase of the surface area so that will be the a dt where a is talking about the surface area so a is surface area so we have to find the rate of increase in surface area so that will be the a dt don't forget that rate means time so the a which is the uh, change of the surface area with time now the adt so we are, that's what we are looking for so also we know that the area of a surface area now of a sphere is a four, 4 pi r square the surface area of a the surface area of a square is 4 pi r square so if i differentiate uh, area with a radius as well so that means i will have the a d r that will give us uh, 8 times 2 here, yeah, that give us 8 pi, then remove 1 from the power, that will give us a hour. So that will give us a 8 pi hour. Do we understand this now? So our aim is to find, okay, so radius is given to be 8 centimeter. Now our aim is to find the ADT. So using change rule, the ADT, same thing as uh, the A over the hour, multiplied by the V over the T, multiplied by the hour over the V. This is change rule, function of function, function within function now. So the head over the t, which is what we are looking for, the rate of increase of uh, surface area over with time equals to the head over the hour. We already have that one. Where's the a over the hour? This is the a over the hour. Multiply the over by dv dt. Do we have that? Dv dt is given to us. Multiply by the hour over the v. Before we have dv over the hour from the volume ball we now need the hour over the v that's why that's why we inverse so that we can get the hour, the hour over the v from there because if this cancelled if the hour cancelled the hour here and the uh, dv cancelled the v here so what do you have like the a over the t which is the equal to the left hand side do we understand that so we can now substitute that into this so we have the a over the t equals to our d over the r is a uh, 8 pi hour multiplied by dv dt is a uh, 150 times our d r over the v is uh, 1 over 4 pi r squared so from there 4 can go in 8 then r can cancel r here r, uh, r here so you have a uh, r left here so that means the a over the t will give us a uh, 300 over r uh, giving the value of our radius so that will be 80 so to that here that will be 300 over 80 and uh, that will give us a uh, 3.75 centimeter squared per seconds as uh, the uh, the rate of increase of surface area then question number 11 b is from the is from the equation of circle is it from equation of circle we are told that the equation of circle is given by 4x squared plus 4y squared minus 16x plus 12y plus 5 equals to 0 find the equation of the tangent to the circle at this coordinates 3 comma half so we are looking for equation of tangent in this case now so there are ways of going about this there is a default method which is under equation of circle to find the equation of tangent. So that is uh, what majority of the learners know. But they do know that uh, you can also apply the this can also uh, is applicable to differential calculus. This is also another application of uh, differentiation. We can apply differentiation to this as well. And that's what we are going to use in this video. So we are given the equation of this circle which is a uh, four 4x squared plus 4y squared minus 16x plus 12y plus 5x plus 5 equals 0. And if you look at this function given to us here, which is equation of circle, and when it comes to quadrat uh, differentiation, this is implicit function. Do we understand? Do we remember? Good. If you now you have to differentiate this one impl implicitly. So if I differentiate this, 
that will give us a uh, 8x then this one will also give us a uh, 8y then because this uh, we are differentiating our dependent variable so we need to add the y the x then if you differentiate 16 minus 16 then that give us 6 minus 16 and if you differentiate 12 y that give us a uh, 12 the y the x if you differentiate 5 that is 0 because it's a constant and that give us 0 from there you can collect like times so we have uh, okay sorry 2 is common to everything you can divide sorry that's it 2 4 is common to everything you can divide through by 4 if I divide through by 4 I have 2x plus 2y dy dx minus 4 plus 3 dy dx equals to 0 you can take the like times from there so minus 4 will come to this side then 2x also will come here so we have a 2y dy dx plus 3 dy dx equals to 4 minus 2x so the y ds is common you can factorize the y ds here so you have a, a 2y plus 3 into the y dx equals to 4 minus 2x our aim is to find the y ds which is talking about the difference differentiation and the differentiation means gradient if you understand if you are finding the gradient the, the differentiation of a function then we are trying to find the gradient of the function so if I divide this by uh, if I divide both sides by 2y plus 3, I have the y dx equals to 4 minus 2x over 2y plus 3. So that's the gradient of the function of this equation of circle. But we can get the, the gradient of that equation of circle at this uh, point given to us 3, comma half. It means your s is 3 and your y is minus two, 1 over 2. So if you put that here, so at 3, comma 1, 1 over 2, you can know the gradient. So the gradient will be equals to 4 minus 2 times 3 because our s is 3 over 2 times y which is half plus 3. So that will give us a 4 minus 6. 2 cancel 2 here. So we have 1 plus 3 left here. Then from there that should give us a minus 2 over 4. That give us minus half. So that means the gradient of the function or that equation of circle. The gradient of that equation of circle at this point is minus half. So don't forget our aim is to find the equation of circle, sorry, equation of tangent at this point of trajection to this uh, circle. So, but uh, the uh, equation of a tangent is a linear equation. Don't forget because tangent is a straight line. So that means equation of is tangent is, is going to give us a straight line equation, uh, equation of straight line because tangent is a straight line. Don't forget that. So then the greater of this. Uh, function at this point is one minus one over two and don't forget that that tangent is touching that curve or touching that circle at this point as well so that means the the gradient of the tangent as well is also what minus half so that means the gradient of the tangent also is what minus half at that point so but the equation of the, the tangent is always a straight line so we have y equals to minus uh, y equals to ms plus c which is representing the equation of straight line where your m is gradient and your c is y intercept so if you put this here, so we have a y is equals to minus 1 over 2x plus c because this is the y ds means what gradient so and our m here representing gradient as well. So from there now we can we need to find the value of our c. So we can use that do that as this uh, at this point. So at s comma at 3 comma half our s is 3 our y is half. So if we put that here you have a half equals to minus 1 over 2 multiplied by x which is 3 plus c we simplify that for that that gives us half equals to uh minus 1 over 3 because 3 multiplied by the give minus 1 over 3 plus c then what do we do we can multiply through by 2 or collect light times here so i multiply through by 2 we have a two, 1 minus minus 2 1 equals to minus 3 plus 2c collect light time 2c equals to 4 c will be equals to 2 so that may the y intercept here which is c is 2 so if you put that you return it back here you have a y equals to minus half x plus 2 so you can multiply through by 2 to clear this denominator so you have 2y equals to minus x plus 4 then you can you arrange that will give us a x plus 2y equals to 4 which is the equation of the tangent we are looking for do we understand that good now question number 12 is from statistics number 12 is from statistics you are given that uh, the mean and the variance of uh, of this uh, five data or is it five or six data six data 
two three five seven p and q are seven and 55 over 3 respectively we have to find the value of p find the values of p and q so we are giving the mean of this set of data to be 7 and we are giving the variance to be 55 over 3 so we have to use that to find the value of p and q here now the question is very simple as well but it could be a little bit tricky now if you remember how to find mean of a uh, on group data that means you need to have those data together divided by how many data you have which is six and that say that the mean is seven so from there you can see that we are having two unknown and that should give us an equation so look at what i have there this is the table so these are the value of our these are the value of x two three five six so two three five seven we have p and q so we are meant to have this data together because we want to find main now so that should be if you add 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 5 10 plus 7 that's 17 plus p plus q so that's the sum of the value of our x then let's leave this one we are going coming back to this because this one is for variance then if you translate this one using main if you to find main of this one and that should be this divided by 6 equals to what 7 we are going to be giving the main which should be 7 so you'll be having mean which is the summation of your x which uh, mean is summation of what x over n which is the number of data so and we'll be giving the mean to be 7 so you have 7 equals to when you sum this together that gave us 17 plus p plus q over number of data is 6 you can cross multiply from there that should give us uh, 7 times 6 is 42 equals to 17 plus p plus q take the light time you have p plus q equals to 42 minus 7 and uh, 42 minus 17 so that will give us uh, this and if you subtract this that will give us p plus q equals to 25 which we can call equation 1 but because of what you are going to get here i can simplify this i can say that let's uh, make p sort of the formula here so p will be equals to 25 minus q we can call that one equation 1 are we there good so now we have to also find variance and the variance is equal to 53 point uh, 53 over 3 so remember the formula of finding variance of an ungrouped data so variance is a summation of x minus s bar squared over number of data summation of x minus s bar squared over number of data because this is an ungrouped data now so that's why you're now having frequency here do you understand that now you're having this a group data so frequency will come in and if you have a summation so we'll be having over summation f here but because it's an ungrouped data that's why you're now having frequency you have summation f minus x bar squared over n so this was what we have before so we need to compute our x minus x bar x minus what x bar our this is our x and our s bar is the main which is given to us which is seven so the mean is seven so you cannot compute s minus x bar this is s minus s bar i don't know why it's not showing in the table so it is x minus x by having here so we have 2 minus 7 that gives us minus 5 3 minus 7 is minus uh, 4 5 minus 7 is minus 2 7 minus 7 is 0 p minus 7 is p minus 7 q minus 7 is q minus 7 so we have been able to compute our x minus s bar then we need to square it now so that we have s minus s bar squared so that minus 5 squared that gives us 25 minus 4 square is 16 minus 2 square is 4 0 square is 0 so p minus 7 square is this then q minus 7 square is also this and then what do we do we have to sum this together summation of this so if you sum this together 25 plus 16 plus 4 that gives us a 45 then plus this then plus this as well so that's what you are having here now so you now put that one in the formula here over 6 so that should be Variance is given 55 over 3 equals to what we got at the numerator, which is the summation here 45 plus p minus 7 squared plus q minus 7 squared over 6. Do we understand that? We can cross multiply from there. So 6 will multiply 55, that will give us a 330. Then 2 will multiply 45 here, that should give us a uh, 135. 3 multiplied by this, that give us a 3 into p minus 7 squared. Then 3 multiplied by d that gives us 3 into 9 minus 7 squared. 
so we perceive that the three can three can go in now we can divide through by three although we ought to have done that from here three can go here three can go in six but no problem you can see it here so you can divide through by three so that should give us a one and ten here equals to 45 plus if you divide this one by three so you have p minus seven squared divide this one by three you have q minus seven squared as well from there what do we do we can now open the bracket here you can open this bracket p minus seven squared that should give us a p square minus 14p plus 40 49 you i believe you understand what i've done here you have to op open this bracket in two places p minus 7 p minus 7 they expand the bracket and simplify that will give us a p square minus 14p plus 49 this do the same thing here you have q minus 7 square that will give us a q square minus 14q plus 49 so from there we can collect like times so what do we have we have uh, 110 equals to 49 plus 45 plus 49 plus 49 that should give us a uh, 143 then we have a p square then plus q squared then we have a minus 14 p then minus 14 q do we understand that from there we can uh, take the light times as well so you'll be having uh, take this one to this side you'll be having minus uh, 110 minus 143 that gives us a minus 33 equals to p square plus q square minus 14p minus 14q uh, 14q so this one we can call this one equation 2 do you understand that now so this one is in terms of quadratic equation of two variables and this is a linear equation of two, uh, two, two linear equation of two variables as well so you can also to the value of p into this second equation so that you can find our q so if you do that whatever you see p you put 25 minus q so that may be having minus 33 equals so there's p here so you have 25 minus q squared plus q squared minus 14 this is p as well so you have minus 14 into 25 minus q then minus 14 q so you have to expand this bracket in two places as well so you have minus 33 equals so so you have 25 minus q into bracket 25 minus minus q as well so you expand the bracket you have 625 minus 50 q plus q squared then plus this q squared open the bracket here you have a minus 3, 350 plus 14 q then minus 14 q do you understand that very well good if you understand let's continue so you can take the lifetime from there what do we do um we have a q square plus q square that give us a 2q squared then uh, we have a 14q minus 14q that give us zero we are left with a minus 50q so you have minus 50q then we have a 6 on 625 minus 350 then this one comes here plus 33 so that should give us a 308 equals to zero so then you can divide through by two so you have a q square equals to 20 uh, q square minus 25 q plus 154 equal to zero so we have to now solve this quadratic equation to get the value of values of our q so you can use factorization method here as well two number you can multiply together to give us 154 and when you add them together give us a minus 25 this is that those are minus 14 and minus 11 so that will be you have q square minus 14 q minus 11 q plus 154 equals to zero factorize this factorize this q is common here you have q into q minus 14 minus 11 is common you have minus 11 into q minus 14 equals to zero so here you have q minus 11 q minus 14 equals to zero that means your q because of 11 or your q because of 14 in this case so now you know the value you know the values of q's now q is a uh, as two value for 11 and 14 then let's find the value of our p so you go back to equation one equation one says that uh, 20 p is equal to 25 minus q so p is equal to 25 minus q so in this case when our q is 11 so you have a uh, 25 minus 11 and that gives us 14. also put the value of our p to be uh, q to be 14 here also you have a uh, p equal to 25 minus q then 25 minus 14 goes to 11 as well so now our q is 11 or 14 also our p is 14 or 11 so to know the value of our p and q now we have a uh, when p is uh, 14 our q is 11 
and then when is our p is 11 our q is 14 so those are the values of p and q for question number 12 question number 13 is from the probability a bus contains 25 identical uh, identical marbles of which 15 are green and the rest are white eight marbles are selected at random from the box one after the other with replacement find correct or four significant figure the probability that exactly exactly three will be white at least one will be white c more than four will be green so this is the probability but it's not the uh, probability that uh, were taught with definite uh, definite value or definite uh, what's it called number of uh, uh, number of uh, of elements in the uh, in the sample space so this is the probability of uh, using the probability distribution method to solve so you are going to use all this using the probability uh, probability distribution and here you are going to be using a uh, binoly binolized uh, trial method so in this case uh, we have that uh, green has a uh, 15 mar uh, 50 we have 15 green marbles and the uh, and the remaining one are uh, the total marbles we have is 25 so we don't know the number of white but if you remove 15 from 25 that should give us uh, the white number of white there because we only have green and uh, white marbles there so that means the white marble will be 10 in that case then uh, 8 marbles are selected at random so but before we do that we need to first of all know the probability of getting white and probability of not getting white and we need to, get, we need to know the probability of getting green and probability of not getting green so so let p represent probability of green so that should be 15 out of 25 and that can be reduced to 3 over, over 5 then probability so q will now represent uh, probability of not green probability of not green which is g complement i wrote here so that will be 1 minus probability of green that will give us 2 over 5 also let's t represent a probability of uh, uh, white that will be 10 out of 25 and that can be reduced as 2 over 5 and the probability let's uh, y represent probability of uh, uh, not getting white or not white that will be 1 minus probability of y that gives us 3 over 5 then from there using binoly uh, binoly uh, probability distribution we are to we are uh, probability of an uh, x element equals to combination of uh, n uh, n combination x then p raised to power s where p is the probability of that event and uh, coming through and probability on that event is, uh, q is probability of events being false then n minus raised to power n minus x in this case so but for the first one we have to try exactly 3 will be white so that means our heads will be equal to 3 so that means probability of s equals to 3 is the first one so if we substitute that here so our n is uh, 8 marbles were picked so we have 8 combination 3 then probability of uh, q on um, then p is the probability of uh, uh, white now that should be 2 over 5 sorry i'm supposed to use uh, i'm supposed to use uh, t here then y here for this one but no problem you still understand what you're having here so probability of uh, picking white don't forget that we're having three white that exactly three will be picked so exactly three will be white rather so p is representing probability of uh, picking white q, q is representing probability of not picking white so which is represented by t and y here but i forgot to use t and y so i still use p and q no problem so probability of picking white is a uh, p which is a uh, two over five then raised to power x which is three the probability of not picking white which is a uh, 3 over 5 3 over 5 here that will give us a uh, and uh, and then 3 over 5 raised to power our n is 8 minus l which is 3 so that gives us 5 then if you simplify that further you have a com eight combination 3 is a uh, 56 times 3 raised to power 3 is a uh, 8 over 5 raised to power 3 is 125 times 
three is over five uh, two forty three over five is over five uh, three thousand one twenty five. We simplify it that will give us zero point two seven eight seven. The next one is that the probability at least one will be white. Probability of one at least one will be white is the probability it will give us a one minus probability of no white so probability of a uh, at least one will be white will be probability of uh, that will be one minus probability of no white so that will give us a one minus probability of no white will be eight combination zero so you have eight combination zero then probability of white is two over five raised to power s is in that case s is equal to zero then uh, because in this case s probability of no y that means your s is equal to zero in this case so s is equal to zero so you have a uh, 3 raised to power 5 raised to power 0 then multiply by probability of no, no y that will be 3 over 5 raised to power uh, n minus our uh, n is 8 8 minus 0 that gives us what 8 here so if you simplify that for that that gives us 1 minus 8 combination 0 is 1 times 2 over 5 raised to power 0 is also 1 times 3 raised to power 8 is a uh, 6561 over 5 raised to power is a uh, 390,725 we simplify this one so we have in a uh, 1 minus this if you simplify it that gives us a 0 0.9832 approximately to four decimal places then the last one we have to find that uh, at least one will be white sorry we see more than four will be green rather more than four will be green so that will be probability of s is greater than four in this case so f is greater than four that will be probability of five plus probability of s is six probability of, prob plus probability of s is seven then probability that s is equal to what eight since the probability of green is uh, more than four so in this case our uh, focus is on green not white now so that means if you do that using this Bannon line uh, method for probability of s equal to 5 you have uh, 8 combination 5 8 combination 5 because our s is equal to 5 in this case then probability of picking green is a uh, 3 over 5 so you have 3 over 5 raised to power raised to power x which is 5 then probability of not pick our q is probability of not picking green this will be 2 over 5 so you have 2 over 5 raised to power 3 and how do we get 3 here yeah, that will be 8 minus 5 that gives us 3 then plus probability of picking uh, 6 uh, probability that s is equal to c that will give us uh, 8 combination 6 into uh, uh, 3 over 5 raised to power 6 into 2 over 5 raised to power 2 how do we get 2 that will be 8, raised to 8 minus 6 that will give us 2 the probability of uh, s equal to 7 will give us uh, 8 combination 7 into 3 raised to over 5 raised to power 7 into 3 over 5 raised to power 1 plus probability of get, uh, s equal to 8 that will be 8 combination 8 into 3 over 5 Raised to power 8 into 2 over 5 raised to power 0. And how do we get 0? That would be 8 minus 8. That gives us 0. If you simplify that further, this one will give us this. If you simplify, then if you simplify this, you have this as well. If you simplify this, you have this. If you simplify this one, we have a uh, 1 times uh, that gives us this as well. Step by step. If you carry your calculator, it will help you. Then this simplify this one, you have 0 0.278692 plus simplify this 0 0.209019 plus simplify this as well 0 0.08958 plus simplify this as well that gives us 0 0.016796 if you have together that gives us a 0 0.594087 so that's solution for question number 13 now question number 14 is from uh, forces result, horizontal forces on a plane so is that forces on a plane is the question number 14 we are told that the uh, forces 4 newton comma 3 newtons comma 2 newton and 1 newton act at a point p in direction pq pr ps and pt respectively in the and the clockwise direction such that the angle qpr is 30 degrees angle rps is 30 degrees and angle SPT is equal to 90 degrees and line PQ is line PQ is the positive X axis we are to scale the vector diagram and uh, calculate correct or the nearest whole number the magnitude of the resultant then the direction of the resultant in bearing from 
so like I said the question is a uh, the question is from uh, uh, the question is from uh, forces on a is not force on a plane now let's do this question first now of course we need your axis y axis and x axis to get the, to draw the to sketch as you are being asked to sketch the vector diagram now you need to label your axis this is x axis and this is a y axis and uh, we are told that all the vector are acting at a point p so that means there should be point p at the center here then from there what can we do the first vector there is a four newton and is uh, acting in the direction of pq and uh, also we are told that uh, line pq is a positive x axis so that means from p to there should be a q here that give us this uh, positive x axis here so there should, there should be q here and uh, when there is a q here so that means this x axis positive x axis representing a this uh, pq as well and uh, you are giving the direction of the peak the fox acting on that the direction pq to be 4 newton so we are coming back to we are going to put 4 newton here so but uh, also there's another there is another there is another vector acting on p in the direction of p and uh, direction of r here so that means you have a r here which is like pr then you have been given the angle there which is a uh, angle angle q p r angle q p r is 30 degrees so you have 30 degrees here so the vector on a pq is a vector on pq is a 4 newton and the vector on the p r in direction of p r is a td <coughs> that's a vector the fox the fox acting on the pq is a Four newton and the force acting on PR in direction of PR is a uh, uh, three newton as you have been seeing here. PQ is a PQ is a four newton, PR is a three newton, and the angle between a uh, uh, QPR is a uh, thirty degrees. So the next thing we have to do is that uh, the next vector is a uh, PS. So there should be another PS from a uh, line here from uh, line PS. So vector P, uh, another vector P S, and then the ve uh, first there is a two newton. I uh, told that there is an angle R P S, angle R P S. So that means there should be a line here now, a line here, and the addition be label X, and uh, there should be an angle here also from here to here, which is going to be 30 degrees. So we have 30 degrees as well between angle R, P, S, 30 degrees as well. And the vector there is a 2 newton as well. So we only have one vector, uh, only only one force left, which is a uh, 1 newton. And the that is left for PT. So there's another uh, another uh, vector in the direction of uh, PT. So that means you have a line here from P to T. Then you have T there. And the... Uh, it's uh, one newton, but we are given that the uh, angle angle S P T total angle from year to year is 90 degrees. Don't forget we have to go anti-clockwise, so we are going like this, not like this. So you are going like this. That's why we are going like this because we are going anti-clockwise. That we are going like you are not going like this. So that means the angle between this this vector, this one and this one should be. 90 so and we have a right angle there do we understand that now so technically that means you should know the angle from year to year now if this is 30 30 that means the angle should also be what 30 because from here to from the north to the to the east here that should be 90 so that means the, that should be angle 30 degrees here also and if you remove 30 from the 90 that means from here to here should be what 60 so we have a uh, 60 degrees here as well so and this uh, vector uh, uh, this force here is one newton so that is the diagram this is the vector diagram that we have to to sketch that represent what is given to us then from there we question also to uh, calculate correct to the nearest O number the magnitude of the resultant so we need to 
find the uh, magnitude of the resultant forces here and we know that uh, each of the force will have two components they have a s component and they have a y component for each of the vector so you need to find the s component of each of the vector and the y component for each of the vector so if you do that we have this table on the board so we have forces we have four new things uh, this is typographical error so this is a uh, three new thing not four the first one is four the second one is three so although you can see that we use three to s to solve it so this is three new thing not four so four new thing three new thing the two new thing and the one new thing so for the first four which is a uh, uh, four new thing we need to get the s component of it so the s component of it is going to be was four cos cos the angle on the of the vector is zero the angle of the vector because you are told that uh, that pq the vector vq is on the x axis so that means it does not have an angle so the angle the angle for the vector uh, p and uh, uh, pq so the the angle for the force uh, and one uh, for newton in the direction of pq does not have an angle because it is parallel to that x axis as you have been told so and that should give us a four cos theta force cos theta and four cos cos theta uh, that's a call for four cos zero rather not cos theta four is the new uh, the force that if you are to find resolve it in s component that should be adjacent over hypotenuse adjacent over hypotenuse so that should be cos then i aim to look for this uh, side which should be uh, this uh, sorry we are looking for looking for s component here yeah, that will be the uh, adjacent of hypotenuse so that should be four cos zero and that should give us a uh, four cos zero is a uh, cos zero is a uh, one and that give us a uh, four then for the y component of that vector that should give us a uh, four sine zero and that should give us zero newton then for for three newton we have the the angle there for uh, for four you know, for this new for this force the angle from here to this year from year to year is a uh, 30 degrees sorry 60 degrees rather, from here from this uh, direction of that force to the y as is here the total angle there is what 60 degrees so that means you'll be having the force which is three cos the angle which is 30 uh, 60 and if you simplify that give us a 1.5 newton and for the y component we have a uh, 3 sine 60 as well that give us a 2.5981 newton then for the force 2 newton you'll be having two cos the angle from here to the from this from that force to this uh, why is this uh, the angle there is a uh, 30 so we have uh, two cos 30 that give us 1.7321 newton then the y component we have a uh, two sine 30 that give us one newton then for uh force n one newton to get the s component you can see that the x is now the negative side of x now so that should give us a minus one which is the force cos the angle from from year to year the angle there is a uh, 60 as well so we have cos 60 then that gives us a minus 0 0.5 newton and uh, for the y component you are still looking for maintaining this uh, y axis which is the positive side of y so we have uh, 1 sine 60 that was 0 0.860 so now if you had all this uh, s component the, fo the force of s component together you have 6.7321 and you had this together we have 4.46 from one newton so we have to find the re magnitude of the resultant of the forces now so the magnitude will be square root of the summation of the s component square plus summation of y component squared so that should give us square root of this square plus this square as well and that should give you simplify that that give us 8.00 8.077 newton and uh, we have to take it to the nearest O number that should give us 8 newton to the nearest O number and also we have to find the direction of the resultant also and uh, that should give us a tan theta where theta is the, the bearing now or the angle 
so or the direction now that will be the uh, y component divided by the s component that should give us 0 0.6630 so th theta will be tan inverse of this that should give us 33.553 30.55 degree rather and the theta will be will be 34 degrees as well that's the direction of the resultant then the last question which is question number 15 is from the motion uh, uh, motion on the vertical uh, what's it called motion motion against vertical uh, along the vertical uh, distance now motion against gravity okay let me use that motion against gravity not the question is not from motion is not on motion on, on a horizontal or it's not a right linear motion is mo motion against gravity now so you know we have you have different type of motion so but this motion is against gravity a an object is thrown upward from point o with a velocity 18 centimeter 18 meter per, per seconds Find the greatest height reached by the object to that time before the object returned uh, to point O. Velocity of the object after three seconds. So we are given the initial velocity, and uh, we know that uh, at the greatest at the greatest height, and uh, the final velocity will be zero because before the object start coming down as well. Then from there, we know that. Uh, we have to find the uh, the highest uh, the greatest height reach. So using one of the equation of motion. So we have v square equals to u square. It's supposed to be plus, but you have a minus because the bo the object thrown is again gravity. So that we are going to be having minus nine instead of plus two. Then multiply by the g, which is the acceleration due to gravity. Then multiply by the height. So v is zero. So you have v. 0 squared equals to 18 squared minus 2 times 10 because the, we are given the acceleration due to gravity to be 10 multiplied by h so that should give us a 0 equals to 3 to 4 minus 20 h collect the like times 20 h is equals to 3 to 4 divided both side by 20 h should be 16.2 meters as the greatest height reach they have to find total time before the object return to the ground or to the point o so that means that will be time to get up plus the time to come down although they have the same time so the time to go up and the same and time to come down is the same thing but nevertheless so you need to get the time so you are you use the second uh, another law uh, equation of motion which is v equals to u minus gt and then the reason why you are using minus so uh, v is 0 u is 18 minus 10 t so 10 t equals to 18 then t will be equal to 1.8 seconds so this is the time for to go up then to come down that will be 1.8 also and that should give us a 3.6 as total time to go up and down then the velocity after 3 seconds so you know at that point in time now is coming back so velocity of, of the object after 3 seconds so we have v is equal to u plus gt v is equal to 18 plus 10 times 3 18 times 3 then v is equals to 48 meter per second as the value of a uh, final velocity after 3 seconds so those are the 15 questions for uh, YGC for the mathematics uh, theory questions which we have solved together step by step by uh, one after the other and I want to believe you have been able to learn one or two things from this video as you solve the uh, the question together and i want to believe you like it please if you are yet to subscribe to the channel please click on the subscribe button right now on the channel so as to help us improve this channel and also drop uh, like this video and share the video with students who are preparing for YEC 2024 in order to help them prepare for the uh, for the mathematics uh, exam and uh, like the video Drop the comment, your comment in the comment section of this video, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye.